Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn Nelson. I'm with the Wycard Realtor CJ Properties. I'm the sales manager here, and today I will be talking with Heather Campbell. She is one of the top million dollar agents uh, with Wycard Realtors uh, Griffin Company. And uh, her last year's GPI, which is year 2022, is $1.5 million. And I hope today's video will help you out and make you become the next million dollar agent. Thank you. Let's get started. Cannot wait, right? And welcome, Heather. And I'm going to have you to introduce yourself to our audience. So my name is Heather Campbell, and I am with Weikert Realtors, the Griffin Company. And I have been with Weikert. Um, our owners are Brandon Long and Carter Clark and Philip Taldo. And I have been with these guys my entire career, all but three months. So I've been with them for 16 years. Second question I have is, how did you start and what is your gross commission in year 2022, if you don't mind to share it with us? Thank you. So my story is kind of funny. I, I first went to my real estate class and, and uh, started real estate and I went to class for three days and didn't go back. So uh, uh, about six years after that, I decided this is really what I want to do. And I went back to real estate school and started, and that was 16 years ago. So um, that's that's kind of how I got started and, and was just, I was in a position to look for a new career and it was pharmaceutical sales or real estate. And I kind of did some research and went around to open houses and decided, you know, let's give it a go at real estate. I was 36 years old when I started. So um or 34 years old, maybe <laughs> 34 years old. So, um, yeah. And, um, last year, 2022 was my best year that I've had. I've had some pretty good years, but last year, my GCI was 1.5 million. What is your daily schedule like as far as uh, for prospecting or lead generation? And would you please share that with us? So my, my, um, my generate my lead generation is a little bit different than a, and than other agents, um, in the fact that I'm mostly a listing agent. Um, so I do things a little bit different, but my routine is the same that I think all agents should have. I have my daily routine. There's certain things I do every day. Um, I'm a little bit more expanded because I have a, a, a staff that, that helps me. So whether it's me doing it or my staff that's doing it, we have daily tasks that we do. And um, we, we call on, uh, for me personally, my, my clientele is other agents. Um, that's really what I focus on. I focus on selling to other agents that may have 20 buyers instead of trying to wrangle 20 buyers. So my job is to take care of other agents um, my, my, and, and to promote my listings. Um, but I think it's so important to have daily tasks that you know that you're doing, that you get done. Um, it helps prevent the fires. Um, you're never going to get rid of all the fires every day. But um, the, the, the more that you can control your day, the, the less up and down it seems to be. Okay, now let's talk about the time blocking. So when do you realize uh, time blocking is very important uh, for your business? I realized real quick because if you don't care about your time, nobody else does. And um, we're in a service industry um, and people want an answer immediately. And, um, you know, whether or not you know, they're going to get mulch in their yard is not an answer that has to be immediate. Um, so I learned real quick that my time was in my control and that, that if I didn't control my time, nobody was going to respect my time if I didn't respect my own time. And as much as I want to help clients and answer questions, um, I also want to, um, to, to, to be able to prospect so that I have that next sale. I think it's super, super important. If, if you're going to make money real estate, 
and you're going to make it a career, you have got to take out the highs and lows. And to take out the highs and lows, you know, when you go forward and you, and you get some things under contract and now you're dealing with inspection and and banks and title and all these other things, you forget to prospect. And then in 45 days, you, you got your paycheck and now you're like, where's my next paycheck? And so you have to continue to prospect. You have to set your time aside for it. It has to be the number one thing to make this a career. Now let's talk about uh, uh, prior priorities. Like uh, how do we um, priority our time? For instance, uh, I'm in the prospecting uh, schedule. I'm on my prospecting schedule. Suddenly I got a call from uh, Facebook uh, that I just uh, called earlier this morning. And he or she wants me, the Facebook wants me to meet them by 10. But I know I'm prospecting. So do you think that, oh, do uh, what would you do in this uh, scenario? Do you just like uh, uh, stop prospecting and then just meet that Facebook because suddenly you got an appointment? I think that people adapt to your time if you have your schedule you know, if you make your schedule and you have it written down, I, you know, something I learned from Gary Griffin, who, um, who used to be one of our owners, um, you know, if, and the same thing that Jim Weikert says, if it's not written down, it's not an appointment, you don't have it in your head. And so I think it's okay. Like, I feel like you're more focused. If, if I'm going to prospect, I'm going to prospect for two hours. I'm going to prospect. And I know that that's going to lead somewhere. Nothing's going to get in the way of prospecting. And then, when I get some hits, okay, then I already have it in my time block that, you know, this is where I follow up with my hits, whether that means I have to send a thank you email, whether I have to prepare a presentation, whatever it is, I already have that time blocked out. And if I get to a time block in my schedule that I don't have anything to do, then that tells me I got to go back to prospecting. You know, so if you're not filling out your, t like, I believe in time blocks, I, you know, it's hard to be so regimented in this industry, especially when we have low inventory and things like that. You know, I have a team that I lead um, that's not any part of my GCI. Brandon always wants me to say that my GCI is what I earn. Oh. And I'm always telling them in your time block, you know, if, if you have time blocked here to prepare presentations and to set listing appointments and to do that kind of stuff and you don't have anything to do, then you got to go back and prospect until you can fill that time block. And if you do this, I believe if you do this for five years, that you will build a career that then you can pick and choose what it is that you want to do. Um, you may not, you, you're still going to have to prospect, but you might be prospecting to past clients. You might be prospecting to a closer uh, sphere of people than maybe cold calling or taking, um, you know, internet leads and things like that. But if you don't do that in the first five years, then in 10 years, you're going to be burnt out because you're still going to be taking those internet leads. You're still going to be taking those cold calls. And so I think it's just, you have to go into it knowing that you have to prospect every day. It's I, not I set aside, you know, um, a half hour, three times a day just to put out fires so that if somebody calls me and they're like, Hey, we don't know what the bank's doing. We don't think we can close or that. I already have it in my phone. I just hit this thing. Can I call you? what time would be best to call you back between 12 and one or 12, I think it's 12 and 1230 between two and two 30 between five and five 30, pretty much everything can hold off for two hours. But if we continue to jump every time a client wants us to jump, we're not controlling our time. And we're, and well, what if a buyer wants to see a house? Well, fantastic. You want to see between, cause, cause I can show property between eight and 10. I can show property between, you know, two and, four or I can show property between seven and eight or whatever it may be. You know, everybody's right. just got to set their own schedule. Uh, now let's talk about what kind of uh, lead generation method a new agents should use. For instance, like uh, social media, door knocking, cold calling, expires, Facebooks, uh, and uh, uh, geo farming. They're all kind of things, right? So we're where should they start? Where should a new agent start? So I, it, it's hard to do, but I think it's very important. I think that there's steps and stages that you take as a new agent. I think within your first 18 months, um, depending on, 
on on how good you are at lead generation and and how good you are at turning like if you're really diligent in in prospecting and all that kind of stuff and and you're spot on in your presentation and you're landing sales because of it then you're you're going to elevate yourself faster if you're prospecting and you're not landing sales or buyers or sellers then you got to work on your your closing you got to work on getting that so i think that you you you're mastering a craft and whatever that craft is so i think it's important that you do everything um you know um i got into this business um i have a a little bit of a marketing background but i got into this business thinking that i was going to help buyers i'm a horrible buyers agent terrible okay and so but i didn't learn that until i tried to do it um and i think you have to do everything and be a sponge and then figure out, you know, I, I tell everybody there's this, there's a, there's the, the, the gold in the middle. When you can find something that you're good at, something that you enjoy and something you make money at, you found the Holy grail. It's the gold in the middle. And until you know what that is, you have to do everything. You have to knock on doors. You have to farm. You have to take internet leads. You have to take cold calls. You have to put yourself out there, hand a business card to everybody that you know, um, you know, do all of that and perfect your trade, you know, and perfect your craft. And um, if you're reluctant, reluctant to give um, a listing presentation, practice a listing presentation, you know, practice your buyer's consult, you know, learn from others. Um, copy what other people are doing. You know, I think all of those things are important to do it all. So how many hours do you uh, usually work uh, per week or per day? So into your real estate business? I believe in hard work. And I hear a lot of people say, I want to be a real estate agent so that I can pick my hours and I can have free time and I can, we're, we're in charge of somebody's largest purchase. Um, you got to know what's going on. You got to be in it. Um, you got to be in it to win it. And if you're not, you're going to be cast aside. Um, you know, I believe that this is a career and I believe people should hire agents that make it a career. Um, I don't want to go to a um, part-time dentist that doesn't get continually educated and knows the latest things going on. I don't want to use those kind of professionals. You know, right. so we, we, we need to um, be in it and be training and ready to put in your hours. It depends on how quickly you discover your craft and how quickly you and how diligent you are to continuously try to perfect your craft. And whether whether that is, you know, are, are you a buyer's agent and you have to show 25 houses before you get a buyer to buy a house? Oh, right. Um because if you're showing 20 to every buyer, ooh, it might not be the buyer, it might be you, you know, type thing. If you're going on listing appointments, not landing them and getting beat out, then perfect your craft, get better. How to get listings as a, a, a new agent or for new agents? Things, they're never done that. There is no um, uh, record showing that they have sold a number of um, properties. Well, one, nobody knows you're a new agent unless you tell them. So if you go in there like a new agent, then they're going to know you're a new agent. Um, I tell my staff, uh, my team all the time, use the word we. Hey, we just had a sale in this neighborhood and it sold within a day. We means Wiker. You know, we means the team. We means whoever you want it to be. I've done all the training and I continue to do training and I'm going to work hard for you and I'm going to sell your house. And you can educate yourself. Um, you you know, hard work and diligence and communication mm -hmm. and, and effort means something to people. And, um, you know, I've gotten beat out by new agents because mm -hmm. they paid a little bit more attention or they had something that I didn't, wasn't able to offer. And when I, and I beat out seasoned agents, um, it's just a mindset. It's a mindset. And if you got it, and as a new agent, you got to get past it. I love, you know, I talked to a new agent yesterday. She's going to, she's going to write an offer on one of my houses. And she said, you know, I haven't ever done new construction. I'm new. Uh -huh. She was forthcoming and she's, 
you know, got a mind about her and she's eager. And that's all you have to do as a new agent. You just have to show that you want it. It's a lot of self-evaluation. Um, we, you will succeed because of you. You will fail because of you. And if you, you know, in, in our industry, it's easy to jump to different brokerages. It's easy to blame the buyer. It's easy to blame the seller. But your your success and your fail failures lie within you. And if you want to succeed, go succeed. Nobody's stopping you. Go succeed. And just perfect your trade and, and, and continue to get better and, and do the work, do the work. Right. It's not, it is not going real estate. We had about an 18 month window, buddy, that got your license during that time. That's not real. It's not real real estate. You got to go get it. You got to go work. You got to be diligent in it. Uh, now, Heather, you, I know you mentioned education and time blocking prioritize our um, daily schedules and uh, manage uh, our time efficiently and um, with the confidence. Then um, the last question I want to talk about is the tools and the systems that we have and how, how important that is, those tools and systems like a CRM system to help us or to aid us uh, to become a successful agent? I think that the tools are super important, especially in this day and age where everybody can find anything they want on the internet. Um, I, I think that the, to me, the biggest tool we have is our MLS systems. Use your MLS. There's so many things that your MLS can provide that set you apart from the buyer. If you only know as much information as the buyer, then you're not using all your tools. So I think it's a system that's overlooked. You have to learn your MLS. You have to learn how to maneuver it. You have to learn historical data. You've got to learn your MLS. That's the number one tool that you have to learn. And then from there, you got to be with a brokerage that does training. If you're a brand new agent, you know, you've got about a five-year window to learn everything you can if you're going to make this a career. Um, you know, if you most agents, it's about two years before they get um, like, do I want to do this or not? And then they hang on another three. You've got to get the training. So you got to go to every training. You got to find a mentor. You got to ask to, you know, you got to ask people to do their open houses for them. You've got to um, throw yourself out there and just get all, absorb all the training you can from your local board to your company to a mentor, whatever it is that you can do. And then you got to, then, then you got to put the systems in place. You got to have a CRM. Um, I know Weikert has a fantastic CRM. I've used follow up boss um, for almost 11 years. Mm -hmm. So that's my CRM, but you've got to have a CRM. You've got to have a listing presentation. The doors presentation is top notch. It's, it's, it's the best I've seen out there. I use a doors presentation a hundred percent of the time. Um, I do a lot of uh, reload as well. So in upper end clients, mm -hmm. I always use a doors. We have a buyer's, you know, uh, pamphlet that we use and you got, you just have to use the tools and you have to perfect those tools. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just copy somebody, just copy somebody and know what's out there and um, lean on your brokerage, um, lean on, you know, the leaders in your brokerage and, and, and get an accountability partner. Um, get somebody that you can bounce some things off of, um, whether it's in your own brokerage or not. And by golly, make friends with other agents. Yes. Step of success is self-evaluation. And um, if we can correct ourselves within, um, if we can make ourselves better, then I believe anybody can succeed. Um, so I think that that's the number one thing is look at look at yourself and say, okay, what am I good at? What can I improve? You know, what am I doing that is money making? I believe in money making tasks. If, you know, every once in a while we got to sit down and do paperwork or do some things, but let's look at wh where we're spending our time and is it producing a dollar today, tomorrow? Is it going to produce a dollar? You know, what can we change? Um, I don't believe in like just beat my head against the wall and going down this path that's not working. I believe in adapting and, and, you know, let's, you know, let's go down this other path and try this. I believe in trying new things, but, you know, I think 
you got to lean on your brokerage and lean on your people. But I think it's self-evaluation and figure out what you're good at because you're good at something. If you want it, like, you, you know, there's a lot of people in this industry that's making $30,000. And if that's what you want to do, fine. If you want to make great money and be really good, figure out what you're good at and capitalize on it. So I think it's consistency and self-evaluation and just, you know, staying with it. And if it doesn't work, try it again. If it doesn't work, try it a different way. It's not, you know, it's not, it's, it, it might not be the task that you're doing. It might be the way that you're doing it, you know, right. and my golly, ask somebody that's successful. We, you know, it's important for our industry more so now than ever that we help each other be successful and that we help each other be good at our jobs. And um, I know for me, I'm always willing to help anybody, you know, that wants to succeed. So lastly, thank you for being with us today. And uh, thank you. And hopefully we talk soon. And thank you. You bet. Anytime. You okay. take care. You too.